hello guys and welcome back to the channel now guys it is constant intrigue of course within the nigerian political space and that is the one constant that we can rely upon within the nigerian political space that the intrigue is constant so of course a lot of you will recall what happened in february this year the election and all that on the 29th of february when um this article abubaka character was rigged wholesale out of the mandate given him by the Nigerian uh, people, by the Nigerian masses. At least that is the narrative that uh, Abu Bakr has been telling everybody that he was rigged out of the mandate that was given him by the Nigerian people. So that's the background. So here is now the latest development. Breaking article meet Tinubu. So now this is now what is happening now. This is why people of course say that all these people are essentially the same and there's no real political party in Nigeria. What we have in Nigeria is a hegemony that is holding the nation to ransom as they continue to loot all of the wealth of that country. So there's no PDP, no APC, no SDP, no nothing. All we have is one hegemony. There's no Hausa, no Fulani, no Yoruba, no Igbo. All we have is a looting class versus the people. And this uh, narrative now that I'm about to bring you speaks again to that. So with that, guys, again, the headline, article meets Tinubu. So now let's now find out exactly what is going on here. This is a short and to the point narrative. So this is not big on detail. And it's really the picture that tells the story. And really what's happened here. That is the real narrative. The former presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party PDP. Alaji Atiku Abubakar. Met with national leader of the All Progressive Congress APC. Bola Tinubu on Saturday in Niger State. Correspondents present learned that Ashwaju was in the state to receive an honorary doctorate degree today in Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida University, Lapia. Both leaders smiled and exchanged pleasantries in the presence of Adamawa State Governor Umaru Fintiri. So Umaru Fintiri is the name of the governor of Adamawa State. So that is a short and to the point caption of this. But this, of course, is uh, really about this picture and the incident or the occurrence really is more of an occurrence than an incident that's happened. So what you are seeing now, of course, is uh, Bola Tenobu and uh, Atiku Abubakar in the company of who I assume, I don't know him, I don't know what he looks like, but I'm assuming that the third party in this picture is of course the governor of that state, Niger State, this Fintiri fella. But really now, if you go back again to all of the videos that we have been doing about how this uh, Atiku Abubakar has been going to all that would listen to the cats, the dogs, and the women, and the men, and the girls, and the boys, and the children, and everybody that would listen about how he was robbed by the APC, of how he was robbed by the APC of the mandate that he feels he was given uh, by the Nigerian people. And a lot of people had a lot of sympathy with that narrative. I, I would have to admit, have some sympathy. In fact, I have a lot of sympathy. I don't even have sympathy. I have full belief in that uh, narrative that this guy was indeed robbed of the mandate that was given to him by the Nigerian people. And I am of that view because, of course, we have already experienced four years of Buhari. So Buhari has now completely been debitified. And a lot of people, especially his core followings in the north, who he relied on, have now completely had that uh, uh, mystique that he had around him demystified and they now see him for essentially what he is so if he loses a large element of that or even a significant element of that core not vote and doesn't really have a vote amongst the Yoruba people or the Igbo people then essentially if you just do the equations it is pretty obvious that Buhari lost that election but then of course Mahmoud Yakub is appointee and dollar bags etc we all know the narrative so of course a lot of people myself included 
were of the view that uh, this article Abubakar was of course rigged out of that election. There's absolutely no question in my mind about that. And I don't think there's much of a question in the mind of Atiku Abubakar about that. And I don't really think that there's a real question in the mind of any thinking person within the Nigerian space or who has any knowledge of Nigeria or Nigerian politics that that is the worst uh, evidence or example of rigging that we have yet seen within the Nigerian space, even worse than the sort of election that brought up Asanjo in in 1999 when the military just effectively appointed him and we then had a charade. So the worst example, and this guy of course was the victim of it, so here he is now speaking and joshing and piling up with the lead person that led to this uh, vesting upon that he's been vested upon by this happenstance that he's describing now and is lamenting about. So now this now tells you everything that you need to know because I personally, I don't know if I am not matured enough or lack the intellectual uh, functioning or the cranial functioning to be of that mindset but i certainly if i was atiku abubakar would not be laughing and joshing with an element like tenubu so soon after i was completely cheated and robbed blind by tenubu you know so this now then speak to that narrative of course that there's really no opposition there's no atiku abubakar within the nigerian political space there's no malam buhari within the nigerian political space there's no Tinubu within the Nigerian political, there's no Babang, there's no any of these names within the Nigerian political space. What you have within the Nigerian political space are the looters and the victims. This is really the narrative of this picture that you're seeing on your screen now because there's nothing that speaks to anything other than that. If you recall how this guy went through uh, to fight full force for that mandate he mounted an impressive and a sustained campaign and i for one was impressed by the sort of campaign that uh, atiku abubakar mounted for that uh, february election and malam buhari by the way conversely did not really mount that much of a campaign they were just situating him on podiums every now and then just to show presence here and there but this is a guy that did not really mount any sort of campaign you recall that uh, he just divested that to Tenobo and say, ah, Tenobo, let's see what magic you can do now because you record that narrative. That was the narrative then. And then we had all that. And then, of course, there was then that uh, presidential election uh, debate that was meant to take place on the national televisions in Nigeria. And everybody was primed for it. Atiku Abubakar, who they said could not go to America, went to America to show that he could go to America. But then, because of course of that uh, debate, he he cut short his trip to America to come back to Nigeria to come and confront uh, Buhari frontally and this Atiku Abubakar was at the television station in readiness to uh, mount the podium. It's actually gone through makeup and everything and was prepped and ready and was actually on the steps of the stage to mount the stage to go and confront of course uh, all these elements were there um Mogalu, etc what's that name madame obi i know the rest of them and uh this uh i'm not even going to mention the rest of them because they don't really count omoyele was not there i don't think because they bad omoyele of course from the debates as we all know but it was at the steps of the podium to mount the podium to go and confront Malam Buhari frontally before he then got the message and I think actually the Senate president was with him then because that was his uh, lead campaigner Bukola Saraki so he was they were all ready to mount the podium then before they then got the signal of course that Malam Buhari was not going to be turning up because he has now flown up to some obscure state to go and do a rally in some state so you have a nationally televised debate that would transcend uh, the whole of the transpass the whole of the Nigerian space and then of course then you are now saying you are going to a satellite state but of course they are going to a satellite state because the handlers of Buhari knows that he cannot sustain more than a five minute uh, coherence before he starts to fall apart and if he falls apart on national television which he no doubtedly 
would have, then there was no amount of rigging that could have uh, sustained that. So we had all that. And then we had, of course, the narrative of this guy, Buhari, not even being qualified to run for that election in the first place. Because, of course, there was a lot of anomalies in the registration form that is sent to INEC to signal his intention to run for the election. We all know about the school sat or no school sat and all that. And then we know about the uh, we, find, we know about a lot of things. We know about the results from uh, Bordeaux State, which was reporting an 80% uptake in a space that was the heartland and still is the heartland of Boko Haram because Boko Haram, of course, my Duguri and other space is the heartland of Boko Haram. So there's an 80% uptake in voting in an area that is effectively a war zone. I have never heard anything like that before and that will be a first, not just in Nigeria, but for the whole world, that there's an 80% uptake in voting in a space where the people have been dispersed from their homes and they are living in, in shacks and in huts and in trees and in the bushes for fear of their life and there's an 80 percent uh return on previous uh known from that you know so, so so many anomalies so this is are the things of course that's led this atypical abubakar and a lot of people to conclude that he was of course rigged out of that election and i don't think anybody on this planet with an iq of above one uh, single digit would be of the thought that this guy was not rigged out so this is now the guy the dust has barely settled the paint has barely dried on the wall of that election and who is he joshing with now is joshing with and um, piling up with uh bola Tinubu, the looter of Lagos state so that this now tells you everything now that you need to know about the nigerian space so it is them and us and the them is the looters and the us are the victims this is really the dichotomy within the nigerian space and anybody who is of that level of brainlessness uh to have that thought that there's pdp or sdp or apc or blah blah or whatever that there's some politics going on in nigeria anybody that is of that thought should please immediately present himself or herself to the nearest psychiatric unit to the place where they are because they're clearly not of a sound mind conversations in the comment section the looters versus the victims is the topic the narrative of this video so what side of the divide do you fall come share thoughts but before you come share thoughts click on the red subscribe button so it turns gray bell button notifies you every time i drop a new video then come tell me what you are making of this picture you're seeing on your screen and what it portends and what it translates to you in person and how you are reading it come have a conversation about all this with me in the comment section so i'll leave you here joining the comment section but here i say peace